fire that badly damaged a Maple Grove greenhouse early Sunday morning is now being investigated as a possible arson case. On Wednesday, Lined Greenhouse and Nursery reopened to the public, doing what it can to pick up the pieces. The business does not have electricity yet, so it's telling customers cash and carry only. The company announced on Facebook that it's taking the situation week by week with reduced hours. As far as the investigation, police say they have identified five juveniles as persons of interest. As of Wednesday afternoon, no arrests had been announced. The COVID-19 pandemic and the George Floyd murder has taken a toll on mental health in local cities, particularly on communities of color. It's why a local group has started a new initiative to focus specifically on black youth. Reporter Sonny Goins tells us more about their Reimagine Black Youth Mental Health Initiative. Brooklyn Bridge Alliance for Youth was just awarded a $400,000 grant from the federal government to address mental health issues impacting black youth in the Brooklyns. The world around young people right now is radically different. Officials with the organization say the civil unrest and systemic racism continue to negatively affect the health and well-being of black youth in Brooklyn Center and Brooklyn Park. Black youth are impacted differently. The long history of disparities in housing and education, those forces create chronic stress in black families and in black community that are not prevalent in other communities. The group has a three year plan to encourage positive mental health behavior. They will hold community engagement events to spread knowledge and share information. Officials also want to establish a black youth mental health advisory council. The goal is to give young people tools to cope with mental health issues. Just have basic information about what positive mental health is. Where do they get it? How do they keep it? What are the opportunities that they can participate in to really build that social connection that is critical for their well-being? In Brooklyn Center, Sonia Goins, CCX News. The Black Youth Mental Health Initiative is a partnership between the Minnesota Department of Health, local school districts, Hennepin County, Brooklyn Bridge Alliance for Youth, and other groups. Many local police departments continue to deal with staffing challenges. The situation isn't as dire in Maple Grove. The city swore in four new police officers to its department this week. All of them come to Maple Grove after serving for other police departments. Two come from St. Paul, one from St. Cloud, and another from South Lake Minnetonka Police. The department also promoted Officer Keith Stewart to the role of sergeant. Stewart helped restart the department's canine program and has served with Maple Grove for 19 years. With the new hires, Maple Grove is currently four officers shy of being fully staffed. In Plymouth, several significant redevelopment projects are in the hopper, a level the city hasn't seen in quite some time. Along I-494, plans are in the early stages to redevelop the Prudential Office Campus. Apartments are envisioned for the site, as well as restaurants, retail, and a grocery store. The city also hopes to lure a med tech company to the site. Then, along Highway 169, plans are further along to redevelop the long vacant Four Seasons Mall. City officials expect demolition work to take place early next year. The neighbors have been very, very patient with us over the years, and since we own it now, we have control. We can do what we want to do, and what we want to do is remove that blighted structure. Apartments are also proposed for that site, 20% of which will be designated as affordable. A Plymouth Metrolink park and ride is also planned. And that's not all. Next year, the city expects redevelopment proposals to come forth for its city center area. That, too, is expected to include multifamily housing. With lower temperatures on the horizon, health officials are urging people to start thinking about getting their flu shots. There are some reasons to think that we may have a difficult or more, more challenging flu season this year. And, and one of them is that all of the things that have protected us the past two years are, are gone. Dr. Hannah Lixon is with Hennepin Healthcare, and she's encouraging people to get their flu shots now that the unofficial flu season is here. Over the last two years, public health measures put in place to help prevent the spread of COVID-19, such as mask mandates and social distancing guidelines, also helped prevent the spread of the flu. But now that people aren't taking those same precautions, it increases the risk of influenza spread 
spread, making the flu shot more important this season, particularly for the elderly, young kids, and pregnant women. I think that we are just starting to see the front edge of the flu wave hit the metro area in Minnesota. Um, Flu hits different communities at different times during the fall and, and has been present in some southern states already. We're now seeing it here. So it's a really good time to get your your vaccine because it takes a week or two after that vaccination to have a full level of protection from the vaccine. Health experts say the flu season generally lasts from October through March. Meanwhile, they say it is safe to get both your flu shot and your COVID-19 vaccine at the same time. A Maple Grove resident has found a way to bring new life to hundreds and hundreds of used bicycles. Deb Fortner is behind this impressive collection. All of them will be fixed and spruced up thanks to the nonprofit Free Bikes for Kids. This is Deb's seventh year collecting bikes. They will be taken to a warehouse in Brooklyn Park where they will be sorted and refurbished and then distributed to kids throughout the year. Deb calls the effort energizing. Every bike I collect, it's an opportunity for another child or kid to be able to ride a bike. And it's been so rewarding for me to see the generosity of people and get to meet all these people who are donating bikes. Last year, Deb collected 1,200 bikes, her personal record. This year, she expects to collect close to 900. This Saturday, you can drop off a gently used or new bike at one of 26 the line of health locations, including the Abbott Northwestern West Health Campus in Plymouth and the Alina Health Maple Grove Clinic. The event takes place from 9 to 1. One of the best ever girls prep soccer players from the northwest suburbs returned to the Twin Cities recently, and it was a good trip for her. Jason Malillo has more. A happy homecoming. It was definitely a cherry on the top. That was a long time coming. First time in five years. In her fifth and final season of soccer at the University of Michigan, Meredith Hawkinson played in her home state for the first time as a college athlete and gave her fans a great show, scoring the only goal of the match to lead the Wolverines past the Gophers. I was very happy to do this with, with the team that we have this year. Super fortunate to play with them. Um, and then obviously a lot of fa- friends and family out here. So it was, it was really sweet to get a win in front of them. Hawkinson was a star at Maple Grove High School and won the Miss Soccer Award her senior year. By Hawkinson to get to that ball. Hawkinson with it here and scores. She became a starter at Michigan as a sophomore and led the team in goals that season. Now a graduate student, Hawkinson is soaking in the end of her journey as a student athlete. I think I've grown tremendously both um, as an athlete and as a person. Um, I've been fortunate to play um, under some awesome coaches and they've pushed me on the field and off the field. Hawkinson might not be done dazzling on the pitch, though. I'm going back and forth, but I don't think I'm ready to be done yet. After Michigan, she plans to explore the growing avenues for women in professional soccer. I feel blessed um, to have the opportunity to keep playing, so if it presents itself, it's something that I'm definitely going to look into. In Falcon Heights, Jason Malillo, CCX Sports. The section playoffs are underway in girls' tennis. One local team has high hopes of a return trip to the state tournament. The Maple Grove girls tennis team is coming off its first state tournament appearance in 2021. But without last year's top ranked player in the state, Zoe Adkins, the Crimson didn't know what would happen this fall. With a 16-1 record, it's a better season than the team expected coming in. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we're 16-1, so I think that's amazing. I've never been part of a team this, this amazing in terms of skill level and also just how close we all are to each other. It feels like I get to be with my best friends every single day, and that's so special. We're pleasantly surprised. Uh, we have such great depth on this team that we didn't have last year. Oh, wait. And that oh, really wasn't Ooh, apparent until like maybe the middle of the season yeah. when we started to win a lot of matches in a row. I have had so much fun this year. It's been my favorite so far. It's one of the best. I think we've all improved a ton, and our energy has just been so high, it's really elevated our level of play. Players and coaches talk about the team's depth as a big reason for their success. With close regular season wins over both Delano and Wyzetta, the Crimson earned that top seed for section play. They know in the playoffs, nothing is guaranteed. It won't be easy. 
And I hope the girls are, lo I'm looking forward to it because those are the most fun matches. I think there's a lot of excitement and energy in the team right now. And I think we're all pretty excited for sections coming up. Maple Grove has a double bye and will host a quarterfinal round match on Friday. The section semifinals and final are next Monday and Wednesday at the Rogers Tennis Center. It's the final week of the regular season in high school soccer as teams get ready for next week's section playoffs. Northwest Suburban Conference girls soccer Tuesday as Anoka hosted Osseo. First half, the Tornadoes Lauren Hansen on the free kick passes to Olivia Anda who redirects the ball in for a goal. Anoka leads 1-0 less than 13 minutes into the match. Osseo comes back to tie. The Orioles crossing pass goes off an Anoka defender right to Abby Palaranta and she shoots and scores and it's all tied up 1-1. Anoka answers just over a minute later. It's Hansen getting past a defender, dribbling in, and she scores, netting her 13th goal of the season. She had another goal to make it 3-1 Tornadoes at halftime. Second half and off the Osseo corner kick, the ball is played by Anoka out high to an open Kylie Chindavong, whose shot goes off the goalie's hands and in. The Orioles are within 3-2 but there's no more scoring the rest of the way. Both these teams will finish up the regular season with matches on Thursday. In Anoka, John Jacobson, CCX Sports.